All right, let's continue on with this idea of uh, setting the table of the Lord. But remember, um, this is just a video, one video in a pl whole playlist. And if you happen to stumble upon this video first, I highly recommend you go back and watch this playlist from the beginning to get a, a flow for what we're talking about here. Um, and for those of you that have been following along, and maybe haven't watched them all, the ones, the videos in the playlist that are closest related to this topic of what we're discussing now, the setting the table of the Lord, um, are um, the church incorporated by Yeshua. I, actually, I think I'll do it here on the computer. Um, let me see here. Let's, uh, content. Let's go to playlist here. Uh, and freedom of certain thing. Okay, so with these videos, this is the playlist here. We scroll down. The first one would be, um, well, religion would be a good one. What is it? Belief, ideology, what you think, or action. Um, but uh, then the, these two parts here for the church incorporated by Yeshua versus the church incorporated by the state. Uh, let's see, the gospel, that's this one here. The Gospel, what is it according to Yahuwah? Uh, the Asylum State is on this list, so there's a two-parter there. Um, associate versus Assemble, that's a good one to watch in relationship to this topic. Uh, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, that belongs in this little list. Uh, the Tens, Hundreds, and Thousands. Uh, Piecing the kingdom together, uh, or piecing the kingdom puzzle together, that's these three here. And then uh, this cautionary rant uh, to come to be careful to come together in assembly. So those um, are ones that, if you haven't watched those, those would be good to watch as we go along with this um, with this little uh, series here that's being added, uh, that's setting the table of Yahuwah. Let me set this dry erase board up because I've changed things a little bit. Let me put this Bible here so it holds it up there. Okay, so we started talking, the last dry erase board had kind of a timeline of where we are now and, you know, what's coming and what do we do in this time period before the tribulation, greater exodus, time of Jacob's trouble starts, okay? And a lot of you always ask, well, what do I, what do, I do to come out? Well, remember, not all of you will come out. It's okay. <laughs> the, the, when that time comes, that's when you gotta, that's when you got to leave. But we need some people to come out. Because remember, think of it this way. Uh, there's 13 tribes, you know, once Joseph's two sons were adopted into this uh, nation called Israel. And all the foreigners and strangers were grafted in and they became known as one of whatever tribe they got grafted into. And that, that, that was all decided by where they camped. You know, whose, whose territory, whose region, uh, you know, the way that was set up, the way the tabernacle was set up and the tents, you know, these three tribes on one side, three tribes on the other side, you know, basically for the 12 tribes because they they uh, had set them up around and or thir 13 tribes and then Levi was around the tabernacle and the and the tabernacle of God the tent of God was in the middle okay so wherever the foreigner and stranger camped that was the tribe that he was naturalized into like I said before if you if you come here to the United States if you're you know a Frenchman and you immigrate and be naturalized as an American a US citizen well, you're going to be grafted into one of the 50 states, depending on where you reside. You know, are you, are you a, a Californian? Are you a Texan? Are you a Floridian? Are you a New Yorker? Are you an Iowan? Are you a Nebraskan? Well, wherever you reside, there's where your, you know, your state, uh, state citizenship is. Okay. Same thing in the kingdom. And that's that's coming later. How how big a territory that is, I, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll see um, when the millennial reign set, gets set up. But read the end of Ezekiel, you'll see. If you don't know what tribe you belong to, it's again wherever you camp. You know, who's, 
you know, when the Messiah says, okay, here's, here's where Reuben's going to live. Okay, well, if you decide to live there, you like that territory. Well, then you become a Reubenite. You're grafted into Reuben. Okay. It's, it's, all right, whatever. Okay, so not everybody comes out, right? Who Originally, it was the, the firstborn sons that were supposed to be these called out ministers, but then the golden calf thing happened. God had to make a correction real quick to our screwing it up. So the Levites didn't follow along with this nonsense of the golden calf. So Yahuwah made a covenant with them. And they became these temporary ministers. Now, that covenant's going to continue on, but we see, I can't remember what book it's in, but um, he's not too happy with the Levites. And it's only the sons of Zadok that, are, that didn't go astray. So he keeps the, the covenant with Levi through the sons of Zadok. But I have a feeling the firstborn son thing is going to be renewed. Samuel was the first example of this. He was an Ephraimite, and that's the birthright tribe. When you remember, Jacob put the birthright blessing on Ephraim, not Manasseh. So that's an indication of the firstborn. And Samuel's mother couldn't have children, and then she miraculously prayed to Yahuwah and asked for her womb to be opened up. And then she said, you know, if you bless me with a child, I'll give him to you. I'll sacrifice him to you. And when he was probably 8, 9, 10, somewhere in there, she took him down to the temple and turned him over to Eli, and Eli trained him up as a priest. Now, that's, that's what sacrificing your firstborn means. You're not killing him. Okay, you're giving them over to God to be trained up to be, to come out of the family to be these set apart ministers. Okay, so some people come out, not everybody comes out, some are free, some are bond. Ministers are bond servants of Yahuwah. Remember in the last video, I'd say all civilians are now bond servants by your contracts, your pledges of allegiance, your vows, vows of poverty. You don't really own anything in a lodium. You've got vows of faith, your pledges of allegiance. You've got vows of obedience to keep the laws of your of your civil law sovereign power, the laws of your state, the laws of the United States, the laws of your nation, wherever you are. And you and some of you have vows of chastity, so you you can only pledge allegiance to one sovereign power. You know, in the U.S., we they typically pledge allegiance to two sovereigns. You know, these shared sovereigns, the United States and the state. So you're kind of in a polygamous relationship here, <laughs> you know. So even the United States system sets you up to be a whore having two masters. I mean, it's, it's horrible. Okay. Um, so not everybody can come out, but that's okay. We talked about that. We need some, some people to stay in, kind of like the people, the brave people that wait till the last minute to get off a sinking ship, you know, making sure everybody else gets off. And what, what they're doing, too, is they're, they're spoiling the Egyptians. They're robbing the temple, right? We talked about that in the last video. Okay, so let's continue on. All right, so this is why you need to go back and watch that tens. I've just got a little brief one set up here, but let's kind of go through this, and then we'll talk more about that. When you come together with others, you must know them. There's a maximum law that says no with whom you deal. Now, what this no is, is yada in Hebrew. This is kind of an intimate knowing, all right? So the way I look about it, uh, or about it is, think about um, your friends, the people that you know. You know their character. You know whether they're flaky and show up sometimes. You know if they're just rock solid and always show up. Who are your... So it's not that the flakies aren't part of your... You know, aren't part of this knowing in your tens. Okay? But you know them well enough to know that, hey, <laughs> I, I can only count on Bob, you know, 80% of the time. The other 20% he flakes on me. And Steve flakes about 50-50% of the time because he's really busy. It's not that they're, you know, it's not that they're doing something bad. It's like, you know, they're trying to do more than what they really can sometimes. Okay. But you know them well enough to know that this isn't going to irritate you because you know that's who they are. And, and if they say they're going to be and they don't show up, it doesn't irritate you because you know, hey, something happened and Steve couldn't show up 
probably because he's got seven kids and they're driving him nuts and he's got to do something with those kids or whatever whatever it is you know or maybe maybe he's taking care of elderly parents and he you know they called him and now he's got to rush and take care of his elderly parents okay but what we're looking for what you're looking for is the way I look at it is who would be the top 10 people that you know really well that you put on your speed dial when the stuff hits the fan so if you were in real trouble, who are you going to call? You kind of like Ghostbusters, you know, who are you going to call? Who are the 10 people that you know very well that you could count on, even though sometimes that, you know, they're not 100%, we not, none of us are. Okay, but you know them well enough to know their flaws, you know their you know their strong points, you know their weaknesses, and for the most part, you can rely on them. Okay, remember when we were looking at, um, I think I put up a quote about Sam Adams, you know, early in when America was was uh, starting off as a bunch of Elodial Freeman, and Sam Adams talked about this Decemvry, which is uh, your, your group of 10, Desi, you know, um, Ten. The tens. Okay, these are your ten counselors. The ones that, the council of ten trusted advisors. Your who's your speed dial guys? Who are the people that you put on speed dial? And keep in mind, you don't want these ten to be back scratchers and yes men. Iron sharpens iron. You want these guys to be tough as nails. You want these guys to say, hey, look, and slap you upside. Kind of like uh, Cher and Moonstruck with, uh, with the, uh, oh, what was his name? He was uh, Nicholas Cage. When she slaps him up upside the head and says, snap out of it. You know, you want people that are going to be straight with you. When they see you sinning and starting to step off the path, you want somebody who doesn't, who's got the cojones to come to you and say, look, partner. You're kind of messing up here. Let's see what's going on. Remember, there's a rule in the scriptures. How do you handle when somebody starts messing up? Well, you go to them yourself. You saw it. You saw them starting to, to stray away off the path of Yahuwah. It's your job to go minister them and get that sheep back on the path. So you go by yourself and talk to them. If they ignore you, then what do you do? It says, hey, take three or four others. Where are you getting these three or four others? Mm, I wonder the other people that know all ten of you. You're 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 in this yada type of relationship. You are you are a band of brothers. Did you ever watch that show? Think of it that way too. The band of brothers. Your little squad. And you're in the trenches up through the tribulation. And these people have your back, and you've got theirs. Okay. Now, when you start approaching these people that you already know, don't talk about religion. What is it? That, what, do, what do people say? You know, and I'm talking about the vain crap that oh, oh, this worldly system of religion. Go watch what re, that video I said. You know, what is religion? There's pure religion, and then there's this religion that's just ideology and just claptrap vain words. And that's what you get out of these state-incorporated churches. Oh, yeah, they do a few good works here and there to make themselves feel good, but they're not performing pure religion because where do they, where do they send you? Where does this all this claptrap send you for your government help and assistance? They send you to the God's many of the world. Oh, you need you need to go apply for welfare. You need to you should be calling up and applying to FEMA. The church doesn't take care of you. It's just there to entertain you and dull your senses and amuse you and fill you up with those vain words. That's what I'm saying. Don't go around talking about crappy ideology that's not going to get you anywhere and really just pushes people away. Do don't talk do the pure religion with them. The kingdom fruit. So remember, I think it was, uh, 
let's see, I think it's uh, James. James, the brother of Yeshua. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I think it's in James 1 27, if I remember. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. One, 127. He tells us <clears throat> pure religion, clean and undefiled religion, pure religion, before Yahuwah the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. All right, now I've got a little ditty I wrote up to break down those words. I'm going to take this away for just a second. Let's see if we can pull that up here real quick. Whoops, whoops, I clicked something I shouldn't have yet. Let's see. Scroll down here and see if I can find it. I got it. Okay. So here's a little thing I did. Uh, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. James 1.27. Okay. So what's this undefiled? It's amiantos. Free from that by which the nature of a thing is deformed and debased or its force and vigor impaired. Man is a term of nature, person of the civil law. A person is a man that is deformed and debased. The civilian, okay? So you, want, you don't want to present yourself as a whore, as a civilian whore. You want to be undefiled. You've got to be this chaste bride. Okay, then it goes on to say religion is about visiting the fatherless, orphans, and widows, people without a family, in their affliction. Okay, so what's this visit? Episkeptomai, I think, okay. To look after, to inspect, examine with the eyes, to care for, to look out for, to tend to, to help or benefit, okay? Affliction, in their affliction. You're to visit them in their affliction. What's affliction? Philipsis, something like that. Their tribulation, their trouble, affliction, anguish, persecution, burdens, distress, meaning whenever they have issues with health, illness, finances, burden, work, or chores that become too much for them to do because they are elderly or infirmed or ill or disabled, etc. Do you send them to Social Security? Do you, you, do you make these people that are already suffering from an affliction and not have their own family of their orphans and widows, right? See, your, your family is supposed to be your state government in the kingdom. Well, these people don't have an estate government. They can't go to their family for help because they're, what, without a family. They're orphans and widows. So who do they go to? They go to the ministers. They go to the church to get this help, the, the, you know, to, the, to the body of Christ. 
So how do the, the ministers are the one tending to the people. What, what, remember, what is it you're supposed to do? Visit, to look after, to inspect, examine. You know, who is it in the, the time of the Levi when they're out in the wilderness? Who is it that went and looked at people that, that became ill? The Levites, the ministers went out there. They quarantined them and then they went in and tended to them. And then they had a process of cleaning themselves up you know, so that when they came back into the camp, they didn't get everybody else sick. Nothing's changed, kids. It's just that you don't understand what they were doing. This is very practical, right? Your sacrifices are your offerings to finance these guys to go around and do the things that they need to do. But you're doing it. You're the one in control. They're not, they're not by their contract taking from you. We'll get into that a little more as we go along. And then it says, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So again, pure religion has two parts. One, providing charity and love via service, help, aid to those in need, like widows and orphans, but also to families in need. You know, sometimes families get in over their head where they can't even though, even though it's a family, they can't get themselves out and they need help. So two types of people in the community that do not have a natural family to turn to in their time of need. And then two, to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. What's this unspotted? Aspilos, free from, being sullied, blemished, corrupted, censured, controlled, regulated, and reproachable. One who can be blamed. The world, cosmos, an apt and harmonious arrangement, constitution, order, government. Pure religion is to take care of those in need by charity, which is love. And to do so not by being a part of or a member of a civil government bound to a constitution, the civil order of statutory public welfare schemes. That's impure religion. The Corban of the Pharisees that made the word of God to none effect. The Social Security, unemployment benefits, COVID bailouts, public schools, all of that. You're having to covet. You're, you're not, see, we, we, you know, like with this commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. You only think of it on the fleshly term. You know, well, I'm not screwing my neighbor's wife. I'm good. Okay, but what are you doing corporately? Are you coveting and stealing and committing adultery with foreign and alien gods and coveting and stealing from your neighbors and even robbing them of their life in a th slow torture because you're using the auspices and power of the state to, through the covetous means, legalizing plunder, which becomes legal because you've contracted in and they're taking from you, right? So yeah, I would agree. Now this is going to kind of sound vulgar. You're not you're not committing sex with your neighbor's wife with your with your tallywhacker. You're using the state's tallywhacker to do it, and you think it's okay. So pure religion is to do this like John the Baptist said. Hey, man, you got two coats. Give your neighbor a coat. Now, here's the other thing. You know, which coat do you give them? Do you give them the crappy one? Or do you give them the nicer one? How much do you love your neighbor? If you can afford to go out and buy a new coat and they can't, why don't you give them the nicer one? And you wear the crappy one until you get a chance to go buy the nicer coat. Because they're struggling. See, most people are selfish beyond all get out, and they don't think they are, but they are. And in one of these videos coming up, I'm going to tell you some real stories. I'm going to remove the names like Dragnet. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. But I'm going to tell you some real world stories that me as a minister have been involved in, and it breaks my heart because people say, talk. That's what I'm saying, talking about here. Don't talk religion. I used to say it like this. Don't play church. Be the church. 
The church is a body politic. The assembly, the called out assembly, the holy nation of Yahuwah, i.e. Israel. Okay? So don't talk religion with people. Do pure religion with them. Okay? Help each other out. Help them to come out of the world in small ways. All right? Here's an example. You know, the way the public schools are going, which is the 10th plank of the Communist Manifesto, and now it's just full of woke garbage. Do you think you might want to homeschool your children like the Bible says? Hey, if they're your kids, you educate them. You train them up in the way they ought to go according to this law in this way. Well, you're only going to be able to do that if you homeschool. But let's say you can't because you're busy. Well, if you have this circle of 10, your kids may not stay at your home, but maybe they go into one of this, you know, somebody over here, and maybe it rotates. In this, in this pattern of 10s, these 10 families are a little more, maybe a little less. Maybe somebody in there has the time to, to homeschool all the children in this group. Hmm. Yeah. So now you're freeing up to for them to make the choice to get their kids out of that crap public school and into this private kingdom training, homeschooling. Now, you guys, if you still have the marriage licenses and all that stuff and your kids have the birth certificates, you're going to have to follow the curriculum of it. But you're, now you can... You can also, at the same time, you're fulfilling the obligations of that uh, curriculum. And some of those homeschool curriculums are way better than what they're going to get if they actually go to attend the school. But you can also filter in a biblical education while you're homeschooling them, teaching them about the kingdom. Okay? Just one, you know, why, why should these guys go throw their money away to a carpenter, a plumber, a welder, a mechanic, and all that when this group of tens can come together and serve each other and strengthen each other and, and all that? Start growing a victory garden, you know, a community garden between these people to start, you know, instead of everybody growing a little bit of something, why don't one family grow a whole bunch of potatoes? Another family, you know, and maybe two or three different things. And then another family grows a whole bunch of two or three other things. And then you come together and share all that stuff to, with each other. Because you're working together. And everybody goes around to each other's house when they have uh, time to help them weed, to help them tend. Because it's all you guys are working together. You see, you got to be trained up to think kingdom. You've been trained your whole life to only see the paradigm of the civil system. Okay. So now, remember in the last video too, I talked about the covering. The, the, so one of the things the ministers do for the families that are still in the world is they provide this covering, this, this shelter, because they're, you know, uh, legally to protect them from the world as they're striving to come out. And they're, they're slowly coming out. Remember, if you can be free, choose it rather. Well, that, that's a slow process. Like I said in the video, it took me 14 years. And, it's, and I'm, still, I'm still learning, kids. I'm, hey, man. I mean, it's just that, that 14 years is what I could say, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm getting this now. Right? But I'm still learning, too. This is a, this is a striving. Right? I don't have all the answers, by far from it. I'm I'm a nobody, but I'm try I'm doing my best to try to do this and to you know from my experiences then then share it with you. Okay, so now we we organically come together, right? You you you've got your your tens here. They're starting to see this, not because you're talking about it, but because you're doing it. When you do it, that's when you want to say, you know, this is a lot like how they did it this way. And you can pull it from the Bible, but you can pull it from biblical groups that aren't even in the Bible, like the Anglo-Saxons doing it. You know, the, uh, 
the Huguenots and the Waldenses and various groups of people all throughout history that have returned to this way, been the remnant, and they set an example. Uh, Israel, you know, the Bible does a good job. There's times when Israel as a combined nation came and returned and repented. There's times when it, when they, after the Civil War and they were divided, that each one kind of repented a little bit and returned. So we want to we want to use those examples of what we should be doing, okay. So <clears throat> you strive to start getting this tens together. Remember, where two, two or three are gathered in my name, my character of Yeshua, the Father, you know, this Yahuwah, where they're gathered in my character, my name. There I am also. How, how, how do we know you're gathered in his character? You're doing pure religion. You're not doing this other crap. You're striving to do this. Maybe you're not doing it perfectly, but you're striving to do it. And you're laying down that evidence, that fruit. Okay, so now where two or three are come together. So how do you, how do you in this tens or two or three or six or seven or 15, once you start getting over 15, you might want to think about maybe breaking off into another group. Okay, so here's a little diagram for you. So here we go. We got, this is a 10, even though it's not 10. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, a little more than the two or three. But out of these elders, that's what the E is, the heads of families. And this is an elder too. I've just marked them differently. Who's the best foot washer here? You know, when we were back up here talking about this uh, speed dial, who is it that always shows up? Who is it that gives, I mean, just goes up uh, above and beyond? They say that out of any group, 5% do 95% of the work and 95% do 5% of the work. So who's the one out of this group, who's the one that's the best foot washer? Who's the one that's laying down the most pure religion tracks? Well, then now that's the one that you want to recognize as your minister. How you do that? With offerings. The, the offerings that you give are your vote. That's the covering you're giving this minister. Now, can he use that for his own selfish purposes? No. It's, it, you're giving it to Yeshua. But you're, you're entrusting it to, to this minister to do with it as Yeshua. Yasha, stop. Okay. Think of, think of the conversation when, when Yeshua helped Peter get reconciled again. Remember when Peter... Uh, denied the Messiah three times before the cock crowed. How many times did the Messiah ask Peter if he loved him on the beach that day? Three times. Okay, and then what did he tell Peter? If you love me, feed my sheep. How does he do that? With the offerings. This is becoming this is becoming that left hand. Here's the right hands. He's also a right hand, but when he's serving in a ministerial capacity, he becomes the left hand. So now what this is is these four these four elders have recognized this fifth elder, all of them, and said, you know what? You're my minister, each one of them. Independent. They weren't lobbying each other oh let's let's get together and vote in a democracy no 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 this guy on his own came to the conclusion that this is who i want for my minister without any help from these this guy came to that same conclusion on his own not talking to these guys not lobbying this guy isn't campaigning to be the minister these guys all independently this is what i mean by organically the spirit what what their conscious what they're seeing and witnessing by fruit led them independently as a king of controlling their own thoughts to say, whoa, uh, I'll just say this is Bill. Bill is my minister. 
And then you go to Bill and you say, hey, Bill, I, I really like how you're washing feet. Would you be willing to accept my offerings and be my minister? And then Bill has to say yes or no. You know, you, there's no force in the kingdom. There's no coercion. There's no campaigning. There's no lobbying. There's no guilting. None of that. It's all by free will choice. Okay? Organically. So now maybe Bill says, yeah, and he accepts the offerings from... So what does he do with these offerings? Feeds the sheep. He's he And, and principally... Who's he looking for to take care of? Widows and orphans. But if there's no widows and orphans, what happens when these families get in trouble or need help? Bingo, he's there. Okay. But wait a minute, what about over here? Okay, so here's another 10. And and they did the same thing. And they've got a guy that they see being a, a good foot washer. And, and they all, independent of each other, saw this guy doing a bunch of stuff that they knew. And... And they, independent of each other, wanted each independently wanted to pick him as their minister, and he accepted. Okay. So now, same thing over here. Now, what happens? Where's these are the tens? Well, how does a hundred form? Same way. Where two or three? Now we're talking about these ministers. Where two or three ministers are gathered, there starts to form a hundred. So now these guys come out. Now, I'm not talking about literally. I mean, this is all figurative. But now they're forming a congregation of ministers. And they have to pick, <laughs> by watching the fruit, which one of them is the best foot washer of foot washers. And they pick this guy. Hey, not by force, not by democracy, not by discussing, hey, I, I think I want to pick, pick uh, Phil over here. Yeah, me too. We ought to pick Phil. No, 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 no. This guy watches. You're all watching each other and determining who's the best. Then you go to him yourself. Not not in a democracy, not a majority vote. <clears throat> you pick who you want as a minister. It's your choice. What other people pick, that's their business. You know, maybe these are good friends. Maybe there's some really good friends here that are over here. But they didn't see Bill as the best. They saw Phil. Here's Bill, here's Phil, and maybe this is Roger. Okay? Now, you know, you may not know. This could be, you know, territorially quite a bit different. But you want to link up here. This could be the next town over or two towns over. That's kind of how it worked. You develop these congregations. That's why, that's why the apostle, like Paul and those guys... We're traveling around to these different towns where these congregations were. Who was doing that? Well, the, the, the apostles were at the level of the thousands, not hundreds. Okay. So we're just at the level of a hundred here. But now let's see how this works. See, when these guys gather, don't forsake the gathering together. This little congregation gathers to discuss matters and discuss kingdom business. That's what you did on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. That's why, you know, that church thing is Sunday. It's a work day, kids, not a rest day. The Sabbath, the day before, is when these families stay at home and rest. And they may go to the synagogue, or you know what they call the synagogue. You might go to a, but that wasn't a gathering to work. It was a gathering to discuss the Torah and 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 be together and rest. Sunday, the first day of the week, was your work day. You guys would figure out how you needed to help. You know, if anybody was in assistant need of assistance, and then you would go do those things. Okay, so now. So they don't forsake their gathering together. They don't forsake their gathering together. But guess what? These guys have to gather together. How, why? Because they're the ligaments. This is where we get the word religion from and legal. It's uh, ligare or lignon. 
like ligament. What what does a ligament do in a body? Does it does it help to bind things together? Okay, so we're talking about the body of Messiah now. And these are the ligaments, the connective tissue that connects all these cells of the Messiah's body. So how do we know if this cell over here, this tin, has problems that are bigger than they can handle? Well, because these guys are gathering in a network. So think of it also as your nervous system, your ligaments. This is the connective tissue that sends signals and blood and oxygen and all that, the blood of Messiah through the Messiah's body. They have a problem over here that they can't fix on their own. So this minister comes over here, discusses it, discusses it with these ministers. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, you might not physically get together. We can do this stuff electronically for now, but some, the whole purpose of the, the, of the um, holy days is to actually physically gather. Now you want to try to, this group should be gathering, you know, at least weekly, physically, if you can, locally. This local group, local group. These guys may only be able to gather electronically or at, you know, once a month or something. That's that's kind of what that once a month, this is your witten. You know, if you got a legal issue, here comes your, your these guys, the elders come. All at that witten at that one day a month when you try to resolve all these other practical right hand problems too. Okay. So now if they have a help, if they need help bigger than what they can handle, well, their minister in this round table, in this hundred, tells these other ministers about it. And then where do they go? They come back to their congregation and say, look, uh, you know, Bill's congregation over here has a big problem. Can we help them out? Same thing with over here with Roger. He brings that message back to this congregation. Hey, here's, here's what we need. It's not what you want. It's what you need. Right? And then once they've figured out how to meet the need of over here, then they, whatever that is, then they flow through the body over here to fix and make shalom, whole, at peace, whole again, what, what they're lacking over here. They're not going to FEMA. They're not going to the Social Security Administration. They're not going to the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. They're doing that in the kingdom. And that fruit, that pure religion fruit, is what shows the world that you're now serving a new God. And now both of these left and right hands can give a covering. The ministers can give a covering to the elders because they're producing kingdom fruit. The elders are giving a covering to the ministers because the ministers are doing what the ministers of God are to do. So now you have this legal covering by both hands, cupping, kind of like the good hands of old state, you know, that commercial where they cup their hands. Oh, you're in good hands with old state. Well, no, you're in good hands of the Messiah because you're doing what he told you to do and what he showed his little flock to do. Is this starting to make sense to you? How do you set the table of the Lord? You do what he told you to do and you bring bring the stuff from this other trust over here and give it into this trust so that it can be used to feed the Messiah's sheep and set the captive free. Like it says in Leviticus, was that 26? They, they stole that inscription and put it on the a Liberty Bell out of Leviticus for the Jubilee you got to set the captive free and return every man to his family, to his family estate, and to his possessions. That's going to take some time. But we strive daily to do this. All right, we'll continue this discussion at another time. Thanks for watching and God bless.